Hello, welcome to the Friday, March 22nd, 2019 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. Well, and that's also the answer for this month's challenge. We got a ton of submissions. I think uh, the best the hint that I probably gave was a picture that I posted on Twitter. We got a number of submissions based on that. Also, once I mentioned the local time here, that narrowed it down somewhat. But actually, uh, probably a couple of hundred submissions and only two guessed the city correctly. The winner, who is the person that first submitted the right answer, should receive an email from me sometime later today. Well, but talking about images and associated metadata, Imperva has an interesting blog about a vulnerability in Google Photos that allowed others to guess the location and time and other parameters of photos that you have stored with Google Photos. The problem here is the API that Google exposed in order to search for photos and a neat sort of cross-site timing attack that Imperva was able to exploit in order to actually retrieve search results. In order to exploit the vulnerability, the victim has to be logged into Google Photos and has to be visiting a malicious website. So this sounds very much like cross-site request forging and in in essence, it is cross-site request forging with an interesting twist to get around same origin policy. Due to same origin policy, the attacker will not receive a response back from this web service, but depending on whether or not the search returned any results or not, the time required for the error message to come back to the attacker will be different. So essentially the attacker will have to brute force things like location and time. And with that, the attacker will then be able to essentially enumerate various metadata fields that Google makes available via the search feature. I expect that this vulnerability is actually quite common in similar APIs uh, because the time that it takes for a query to return often depends on how much data is being returned. Even if the browser does not accept the data due to the same origin restrictions, this timing behavior can still be used to enumerate and brute force some of the results. Imperva calls this attack XS leak for cross site leak and set up a GitHub repository with examples of vulnerable APIs. And according to my online security emails that claim to come from the CDC and they claim to include a warning about a recent flu outbreak are really spreading ransomware. The emails include the usual Word document and trick the user into enabling macros by only displaying the headline urgent notice. The malware being spread by this particular scam is Gantt crap. I don't believe there is a decryption tool available yet for this version of Gantt crap. So if you are affected, well, I hope you have good backups. And Atlassian has released a new version of SourceTree. SourceTree is a GUI tool that's available on Windows and Macs and allows you to interact with Git repositories. The problem here is a number of different code execution vulnerabilities that could be triggered by malicious Git repositories. In order to exploit this vulnerability, the victim needs to access a repository to which the attacker has commit privileges. So the attacker doesn't have to run the Git server, the attacker just needs to be able to submit code to it. There's also one URI vulnerability that only affects Windows systems. This one could be executed just by the victim clicking on a link. The other vulnerabilities are affecting Macs and Windows. And Microsoft renamed Windows Defender into Microsoft Defender. And this is more than a simple marketing name change. 
Microsoft Defender will also be available for Mac OS and a limited preview has already been made available. This is of course particularly nice for companies that have a mix of operating systems and would like to use the same anti-malware product in order to make it easier to manage these different products. Of course, Windows Defender has sort of made a reputation for itself as being rather lightweight and pretty effective. Well, that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.